Uh, I totally agree with the, what the panel has said, that the parties have been, we've lost uh, northern liberals from the Republican Party. We've lost southern Democrats from the Democrat, from the, uh, uh, Southerners from the Democratic Party, with Northern Liberals from the Republican Party. So they are two uniform parties, uh, ideologically uniform, of a much more parliamentary nature. And to me, uh, the answer to that is when you have two such ideologically driven parties in a constitutional system of what we have, how do, how do you change that? How do you get around that? Well, it seems to me the frustration we've been living with is this endless gridlock that is becoming more and more rancid, um, personal toxic and paralyzing. And my answer to that has been a third party. A third party to do what? Uh, to actually bring out the fact that we have basically a far left and far right party. And you can say maybe the public parties move farther right than the Democratic Party has moved farther left. But on balance, each one is more to the extreme than the other in a center left, center right country. And what that says to me is the actual core of this country, which is center left, center right, in my view, not just because I'm from Minnesota, I really believe that, okay, is basically unrepresented. At some deep level right now, unrepresented. And I think the way you actually break this gridlock is by having someone identify that centrist block and bring them into the political process. And my criticism of President Obama after the grand bargain failed was why didn't you go to the country? If this grand bargain was important enough for you to to negotiate with John Boehner secretly for months. Why didn't you go to the country? Say, this is what we were talking about. This is the world we live in. This is why this grand bargain will solve the problem. And leverage the country against the Republicans who were standing against it. Now you can say, well, that's not realistic. Or really, what happened on the payroll tax issue? Did you follow that debate? Obama called out Republicans who were wanting to block the uh, extension of the payroll tax cut. It took about two weeks of polls to show the Republican Party that the country, that center left, center right, was totally against them. They folded like that. And the problem today, it seems to me, is the president has invested his whole agenda in the most partisan, paralyzed institution of the country. And the last time he leveraged the American people was the day he got elected. And somebody should start to actually, if we had someone, a Ross Perot, I and mean, let's remember Ross Perot had 40% of the vote at one point. He won 20% of the vote, and he was nuts, okay? <laughs> so, so imagine, imagine if a Michael Bloomberg were there, and you said something I thought very important, Sam. You said um, uh, that the, these are only, oh no, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I did, because I came in late in the, in the- Russ. Russ, I'm sorry, Russ. So, um, I thought you said something really important, which was that um, we've only got these kind of, we've got low partisanship. That's a really good point. It's just about I want to win over you. It, and what we need is high partisanship. Yeah. And to me, what a third party would force is to say to each one, now what is your real position? Because this is, I think, the real position in the country. It would force high partisanship rather than low partisanship. I'll now go back to my height, but thank you very yeah, much. Tom, thank you. <laughs>